Hello and welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. My name's Thomas, joined today by Cal Brannan from the channel. And once again, we are back with some Premier League football. Uh, we've got a bit of a short match preview uh, for you today. First match of the season coming up against Chelsea at home. So just to start off, Cal, well, have you been over the summer, mate? Are you, are you excited for, for football to start again? Uh, to be honest with you, until these past few days, I was dreading actually having to watch Everton again for another season. I was I was enjoying my nice break away, especially after last season, Didn't just not focus on Everton. But these past few days, especially with the transfer rumours we've been making, I think it's filled me with a, a tiny bit more optimism from, for the season. Yeah, I agree. It seemed like we were taking far too long to kind of get into the transfer window when we were in America. It was kind of, there was a rumour that we weren't going to sign any more players until we got back. Uh, and that, that does seem fairly correct. To be fair, it seems like we've had a flurry of activity, but uh, not sure that uh, Idrissa Gay or uh, Onana will be through the door in time for Chelsea, unfortunately. Maybe next week we'll have to say about them, but they do seem like two signings that, that will happen. But, well, a couple of signings that, that we can talk about, who, of course, have been in the door. They've played a couple of minutes in pre-season. Dwight McNeil and James Tarkovsky. Uh, do you expect them both to, to start tomorrow? James Tarkovsky, definitely. And I don't see why McNeil wouldn't start. You know, he start, he gave him some time against Dynamo Kiev. And obviously, with everything going on in Kiev and the state of their squad after everything that's happened, it's a bit of a hard judge. But listen, the, I don't remember if it was the first or second. It was a good finish. He looked, you know, excited. And I've always thought McNeil's a good player. I haven't always thought, you know, he'd be the perfect signing for Everton. I've always said I would have much preferred Corny. But at the same time, he's young. The talent is clearly there. And it's hard to judge his numbers off last season when Burnley couldn't score a goal to save their life. So it's quite difficult to get a real grasp of him. I guess until, I'd say, around halfway through, maybe after the end of this season, it would be the full judge of what we can get from Dwight McNeil. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think I think they should both start. I can't see why they wouldn't, especially considering the injuries to, to Calvert-Lewin. and We don't have an out-and-out -out striker, so... Well, yeah, we don't have too many quality forwards going forward. Still be in. I don't expect room for Nagre to start. I'd imagine that will still be... Mikalenko just just filling that that left back position, but we may as well talk about the striker position pretty quickly because Calvert Lewin is injured. Uh, it seems like he's going to be out for six weeks or so. Rondon is still suspended from that daft red card towards the end of last season. So, what do you expect us to to do with uh, well the general lineup uh, if you want to go for the whole the whole week thing? Well, I when obviously when it all happened, you know, I thought obviously I remembered the Rondon thing, and I had a feeling it always happens with Calvert Lewin. I had a feeling, so I was like. So who's going to play if he gets injured? So I was thinking, is Sims going to stay? And then Dobbin's going to go when Sims went. Is Dobbin going to stay? Obviously, you know, they've both got really good loan moves away, but now we're looking at it, crap, you know, we haven't got... I don't know if there's another lad in the academy who's going to play up front, but at the same time, I'm just imagining, I think we're going to try... I think it's going to be Delhi in a false nine. That's my guess. Mm. Mm. It, it does seem like that is technically our only option, especially considering... Uh, as you mentioned there, Dobbin's gone on loan to, to Derby County, Ellis Sims to Sunland, and I don't think there's anyone else quite in the pipeline who, who would be ready to play. So, Delhi in that false nine position, are you particularly confident with that going into the match? Uh, I mean, if he plays like he did against Crystal Palace, then yeah, but it, the problem with Delhi playing a false nine is then the wingers have to step up, don't they? You know, Delhi can have the game of his life at a false nine, creating chances left, right, and central, but then if we've got you know, Gordon and um, O'Neill, uh, McNeil, sorry, Gray and McNeil, Gray and Gordon just missing the chances, then he can't really do anything. But yeah, I think I've always said I think Delhi's going to have a good season this season. I don't think he's going to be to the levels he was a few years ago. I don't think he's really ever going to hit those levels again. But I think he's going to be competent enough towards where he is one of our better attacking threats. And hopefully he's one of our better attacking threats in a better attacking team, not the same attacking team as last season. Yeah, and I do think, you know, the, the fan base has to consider the fact that if Delhi was quite at the heights that he was a few years ago, then he wouldn't he wouldn't be at Everton at the end of the day. It's, it was the same logic with James Rodriguez, isn't it? That, you know, the, there's a reason these talented players are at the club. They maybe haven't hit the heights, but hopefully we do find some of that talent this season and hopefully he can contribute, especially if he's going to have to play in that false nine position going forwards, because there is something to be said that if he impresses there, there's no need for Rondon to come straight back in after his suspension. Uh, and we know that it will be a spell on the sideline without Calvert-Lewin. So uh, it will be interesting to see if he does make that position his own. But on the Chelsea anyway, who we know kind of tailed off towards the end of last season. They started pretty strongly. There was even talk of them competing in the title. That was pretty clear uh, straight away that that wasn't the case, but then really tailed off after they went out of the Champions League Made a couple of really decent signs, I think, if you look at Koulibaly and Raheem Sterling, especially. 
Uh, they've got a fairly, fairly dare, dangerous squad now. Still, we're kind of without an out and out striker like ourselves now. Now Lukaku's gone back to Inter Milan, but who do you expect to maybe be a, be a threat for them tomorrow? And you, are you quite concerned? Uh, I'm concerned about Raheem Sterling, especially. You know, I think it's one of those where you see Raheem Sterling's going to look at a team like Everton, and he ain't going to disrespect us in a sense, you know. But he's going to look and go, I can score goals against this team, and he's going to, you know, he's going to look at us as proof he's worth the money. I've, I've said I think Sterling's probably going to be one of the signings of the season and he's one of the ones that I think is not getting enough love as he should get, you know, after everything he's done for Man City, everything he's, you know, done in the Premier League, there's no reason why he can't be a consistent goal scorer for Chelsea, not to the level of an out-and-out striker like they expected from Lukaku, but I think he's going to cause us real problems. I think James is going to cause us real problems. I think Chilwell's back too, so I could see James and Chilwell. I don't see Kukurea playing. I see him being on the bench tomorrow. So I think Chelsea have got a lot of players to trouble us. But I we always seem to do well against Chelsea and we always somehow never lose on the opening day of the season. You know, Everton puts some up. I don't like one of the little quizzes or I don't know if they put it on Twitter that we haven't lost in 10 years, so you know we're going to lose now. But it's one of those where, you know... The Goodison's going to be rocking. I can see a very similar atmosphere towards the end of last season, not to the same extent with you know people running on the pitch and stuff like that. But I see it being a booming atmosphere, one that could trouble a very young Chelsea team, and you know it could be one of those where we might be able to pull out a draw. Hopefully, we can pull out three points because a win against Chelsea at the start of the season would fill a lot of the fan base with optimism, even though we always do seem to start the season quite well now. Yeah, that is very true. As, as you mentioned, that Czech record that we, we have against Chelsea, especially at Goodison Park, is it, is an interesting one. We know we beat them last season. That was part of the uh, the big meeting the coaches at the end of the season. It's important that people do stay off the pitch as well. I mean, it's daft people even running on the pitch against Dynamo Kiev. It's completely unnecessary. Uh, but hopefully we do see a similar atmosphere without that kind of nonsense going on. And, and, I, and I do think it will help uh, going into the match. But if we kind of talk about kind of the potential lineups for the game, because... I think it's fairly obvious what Chelsea will play. We know they've played that, that three at the back system for a while and they, they haven't changed that too much with the with the signs this summer and kind of what they've done really fits into that. But in our pre-season as well, Frank's, he has flicked between a, a four at the back and a, and a three at the back. So what do you reckon he, he's going to go for now? I think it's going to be the four, but I think Everton fans need to get used to the three at the back. I think it's coming. I think, you know, we'll probably end up talking about it in the transfer video, the centre-back will link to, I think that, if, we, if he comes in, that's it, three at the back. There's no choice. And, you know, usually I'd be against it, but looking at the centre-backs we've brought in, I actually now wouldn't be as against it as I usually would. You know, we've got a big centre-back room now to the point where if one gets injured, you know, for example, I'm not Mason Holgate's biggest fan. I'm not Michael Keane's biggest fan. Ben Godfrey, he had an amazing first season, tailed off on the second. I'm in the middle with him. But they're definitely good enough backups. There's no denying that, that they are good enough backups. So I think it's one of those where I think it'll be 4-3-3 against Chelsea, maybe 4-4-2 against Chelsea. It's saying that we've got no strikers. So I don't know. I'm guessing it's going to be some sort of free back where we can get away with not playing a striker until Dom comes back and then maybe a 4-3-3 when we sign, when um, Onana and uh, Gay do get through the door, hopefully. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, I think naturally Lampard does want to go with the four. He, 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 yeah, I mean, there is more defensive stability in a three, but I also agree what you mean that, you know, in the past few years, we've tried a three at the back a couple of times. It definitely hasn't worked, but we just haven't had the personnel for that at all. And if Conor Cody does sign for us, which is a pretty heavy rumour linked at the moment, you put him alongside Tarkovsky and Mina or Godfrey, and I think all of a sudden it, it does fill me with much more confidence that that would work. But it will be interesting to see what Frank goes for because he has, he has chopped and changed, and he might chop and change throughout the match as well, but... Just to round off, maybe have you got any score predictions? I'm going to go optimistic. I'm going to say we're going to we're going to surprise them and win two one. I think it's just one of those where it's Frank against Chelsea. If anyone knows that team, it's a very much you know. I think it's Frank's seen every one of these players play except Sterling. You know, so it's one of those where he'll know the team, he'll know the weaknesses. Obviously, the players have developed since Frank left but at the same time the free back system is what Frank tried to implement he's going to know it well I think where I'm looking at it now I think we are going to try counter it with the free back ourselves and it's going to be I think it's going to be one of those games where I think Chelsea would do take the lead but I think it's going to be similar to the Southampton game where the atmosphere helps us fight back and I do think we're going to steal it you know I think I can see Koulibaly I don't know if Koulibaly is going to start I know I can imagine Aspilicueta is going to start now because he's just signed a new deal so you know 
I think it's going to be one of those where I've predicted Sterling to do well, but I could also see Sterling struggling at the ball because it's his first game, you know, of a competitive fixture for the team. Yeah, I can see 2-1 as well, actually. I think we'll make a bright start. The atmosphere straight away will be good. I reckon we'll be 2 up and then maybe they'll score in the 60th or 70th minute or something and make it nice and nervy <laughs> uh, just towards the end. But hopefully we do pick up three points and it would be a massive one, as you said, as well. Chelsea are a very good side, so if you can take advantage of that early season chaos that you do get, pick up three points against a very strong Chelsea side will put us very nicely going forwards. But that's that's pretty much the end of this video. So, Cal, thank you very much for coming on again. Thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to let us know your score predictions down below. And hopefully we can get off to a, to a decent start in the Premier League. So thank you all very much for watching and join us next time on the Toffee Blues. Goodbye.